here I am at Siva Logistics. I have got my fluoro vest on. I'm waiting for them to come and get my uh, self and take me around to another facility because the car's so low, they don't want to drive it down a ramp. So yeah, I'm super stoked. Oh, my heart jumped when I saw it. It's a really nice white color. Slight pearl. Beautiful. The engine in the back. So I've just driven this I, I just love it. I, I love the steering wheel. I love the sound behind me. Never had a car that obviously has the engine behind me. Um, I haven't even tried to drive it hard or anything. I kind of like the manual transition um, being the R-Tronic. It's not automatic. It's, it's an automated manual. I don't know. I just love it. I, I mean, when I saw, saw the car for the first time from the buggy, my heart jumped, literally. Not quite as much as when I got married, but it was up there. It was way up there. Super soaked. Oh my gosh. I'm just looking around and it's got the Alcantara roof. Um, it's just beautiful. I love it. I love it. Hello. So, um, as I've said before, uh, this channel is pretty much uh, my experiences with the R8. Uh, and just wanted to share that. So I've had the car now for probably about, oh, I don't know, three days. And um, this is the first, yeah, multi-stage um, correction and actual cleanse that I'm gonna do. Um, so this is the first of many stages of cleaning. Uh, this particular car has, looks like it has not been polished in a very long time, so one lot of rain and it has just been sticking really everything's just been sticking to it um so it's fine down the sides here what i've discovered though is just tons of grime and dirt get stuck to the back uh and definitely wrapping around the top um yeah just really grimy after like one one day decent day of driving um so uh i'm gonna foam wash it and then I'll get stuck into uh, clay barring, which I have no experience with. I've just bought a clay bar and some cleanser to get the fallout and whatnot off it. So I, I'm in no way an expert on uh, doing this process, but um, yeah, let's give it a shot. Tons of dirt caught in the back of these wheels. I'm gonna take them off properly another day. Uh, but just today, I'm going to uh, basically gurney or pressure wash them down. And then I'll put some wheel cleaner on there. Um, and I'll take them off another day and actually clean them properly. But for now, it's just gonna be a quick uh, cleanse or double cleanse before we take it inside. <laughs> That's one of the best parts about having these rotors, um, which are pretty rare on the R8, and they are actually a factory option, um, is that you can get in here with brushes a lot easier than uh, some of the other um, models. So they're great for cleaning. <laughs> clay barred a car before. Um, I've, I've washed it now. Uh, I did the old uh, foam wash and um, made sure everything was clean. Um, a big tip that I learned, which is a really good idea, is that of course, if you use like a wheel cleaner, is make sure that you go backwards and forwards a few times on the driveway before you leave the car parked up for a couple of days doing um, the next steps that I'm gonna do. Really good idea because of course all the rust or surface rust starts to form on the outside. So uh, I've just got a, a clay bar here um, and from what I've learned, I'm just gonna take probably about a third of the bar uh, and start to mold it in, uh, in my hands. And then I've got some, um, uh, yeah, a clay lubricant, but a purify um, type product so that it can react with any fallout and whatnot and um, try and take 
any of the heavy metals that are probably embedded, try and lift it from actually um, the paintwork. I didn't, I wasn't a believer in this until I started to see the results that you could get really trying to cleanse the car before you start the actual polishing process. So I'm now gonna go and uh, do this. Uh, this will take quite some time, just work panel to panel. And that'll set me up for tomorrow when I really start to um, do the polishing I can then um, start on a really good surface. And I forgot to add that I need to obviously shammy off the car to avoid water stains. So I'm gonna do that first uh, and uh, get it all nice and dry so then I can wet it again, which almost seems like reverse psychology, but hey, that's, that's what the instructions say. Okay, so I thought I'd walk around the car before I start to do um, the clay barring and get any further. Just some before and afters. So this is the Suzuka grey colour. You can see um, with the light reflection, and I'll set up some panel lights. Definitely some swirl marks. and uh, I mean, the car is a lovely colour, being this like metallic grey. But even on the side blades, there's several areas that are just... Yeah, quite badly just buffed down over time with shamming. One of the worst areas, which is the funniest, is this area here. You can see the hazing is just massive. And uh, it's almost like it's, it's not lost its sheen completely, but it's definitely lost a lot of the luster compared to even this panel here. Uh, and definitely this bodywork here in comparison. So, um, yeah, we're gonna start obviously with some clay barring and we'll do a comparison each way, each time through. I don't know if it's gonna be massively different, but um, yeah, we should just do it for uh, reference sake. Okay, so I don't know if anyone watching this probably use this, but it's pretty cool because it starts to react um, with this purple, kind of shows you where the metals on the fallout as they call it um, where it is and you can start to see um, uh, quite a bit on the bumper I don't know if the camera's gonna show it up very well um, so yeah that's kind of cool it just shows you where it's popping up and um, I guess the longer I'm gonna leave it the more it'll have of the purple um, kind of show up uh, and then I'm just gonna do section by section Try not to work too far, too fast. Okay, two things that I just learned is, um, number one, I should have just done like half a panel, uh, half the bonnet. Um, and the other thing that I'd seen on another channel, and I don't know, it's probably about 20 degrees. This gets really firm, so to put it into some hot water to allow it to be pliable is probably the best idea. Um, but yeah, I definitely should have done smaller panels. It's incredible though how it actually, let's get down here. This point here, it's crazy. I've never seen that before. It looks like, it looks like someone bit it. I don't know, maybe someone got super excited. Another stone chip here. So this really does pull up a lot of dirt and grime. You can see there's a chunk there. Who knows where that's come from. Pick that out and keep folding it over. So yeah, smaller panels and just work uh, until you feel it kind of release. Should be nice and smooth. Um, we need to rinse this down too. It's just getting too much, too claggy. Uh, and the other thing that I learned, again, I could be doing this wrong, is that um, up, down, and left, right. So just like when you polish up, down, uh, and left, right, vice versa and overlapping works best. Okay, a um, few learning curves straight after that that I want to share. Um, number one, it takes a lot longer than I expected to clay bar a car. Um, the car is Completely done, except for the carbon fiber lips. I'm gonna do the, the front and rear carbon fiber lips at a later point. Um, it probably took me an hour 
maybe an hour, probably an hour and a half actually, to do it properly. And um, you saw how much I took off before. This is the result though. Um, uh, this is what I had been using from the start. And you can see it's like broken up. Um, I, uh, being the first time experience, I mean, that's what it's meant to look like. I, I had to go back to finish off the last door and a few other areas. Because uh, this looks like that kinetic sand now. Um, it could be that I'm using too much lubricant with it. I don't know. But either way, this is almost useless in the end uh, because it's not firm enough to, to actually pick up all the dirt and, and grime. So I had to go and get some more. So I've probably gone through more than half the bar on that particular time. Um, and because I had to keep rinsing it off, maybe there was just too much moisture and it's gone into this as I've folded it over. So time and also um, make sure when it gets soft that you pull it out. I'm gonna see if this refirms up after it starts to dry out. You can see that it's, it's quite soapy. Um, and uh, anyway, so longer time and uh, swap your clay bar over as you go. Uh, I just wanted to get it done. It's dark here and the mosquitoes have been getting me, but I wanted to get it done so tomorrow I can start off and uh, start the paint correction um, with the buffer. So. Here we go. All right, so we are back in the garage, uh, done the clay bar treatment, and you can see that the water is definitely not beating. Uh, let me see if I can get a better view on this camera. Oh uh, yeah, you can see it's having some streaks there, really having some problems getting away from the actual um, paint itself. Um, so I'm going to chamois this off. I'm gonna chamois this off and just see how it goes underneath. Just as a comparison to what we had before. It feels nice and smooth to the, to the actual chamois. Um, get a little bit dry, yeah, you can see there. If anything, it's showing up all of the scratches, swirls a lot better, which is good. I have some nice clean paint to work with underneath. So I'll, I'll clean this up tonight. And then I didn't realize uh, that I actually had purchased some of this guy here, a razor. Um, so it's gonna get off any oil and polish residue. So uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, okay. It says uh, wipe, off, wipe off with microfiber. So I will uh, shammy this down and then clean this off uh, as a final stage before tomorrow. All right, so I'm gonna use the eraser now and that is just a spray on uh, wipe off type um, setup. It's really just to make sure that there is no oil and uh, no wax left on. Um, so yeah, very easy to use. And this is just gonna make sure that we've got a really good surface to actually start the paint correction tomorrow. You say start the paint correction on the first layer of good bean buffer. Okay, so we're back the next day in the garage. You can see even after going backwards and forwards, probably uh, three times, two or three times to try and clean the brakes, they're still, uh, yeah, come up quite uh, rusty. So um, the car won't be moving much today. So I'll probably just back it out and clean those off before we go too much further. I got some panel lights set up just to really help uh, cause I've only got four high powered down lights just trying to help keep an eye as we are buffing today. Um, so three of those around and I'll just move them as I go around the actual car with the machine. Um, I like to use these panel lights, um, mainly just because they give a real consistent wash and you can put them right underneath the actual uh, car to kind of wash light up. Um, so it's not glary too, like you can easily look at these, whereas the others, I find it just far too intense um, and you get far too much glare. 
directly off them. So as I go, I'll probably put one down here and um, just let it wash up so I can kind of see the swirl marks um, and uh, where I am and I'm not buffing as I go. Just to try and keep an eye on it. So yeah, you can see these ones, nice and rust, surface rust. So we'll get rid of that and then we'll get started on the actual polishing. Okay, so just as a follow-up, just as a follow-up from uh, last night's video, um, I, I basically kind of held this one up and it was extremely, yeah, it just became floppy and very much like kinetic sand. So this is the next day and I really haven't mixed it. Um, this is of course, if you've never used it, what it should look like. I use that on probably one panel. So I've probably only got half the bar left. Uh, this guy here, I just wanted to see if overnight it would it would come back to life. I'm not convinced it's it's going to be much use. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll keep mixing it in the hand. Its consistency is getting a little bit better and starting to hold together. I think maybe it just sucked up too much lubricant. Yeah, okay, it's, get, it's getting better. I'm gonna leave that for another day uh, and see if it loses any more of these cracks. You can see it's dropped down quite a lot already, but um, anyway, just as an FYI, anyone that's clay barring for the first time, um, swap your bars as soon as it starts to go like that because it was almost useless. And so I had to go back over the car. I spent a long time, yeah, going back on the parts that I'd done uh, just to make sure I got it right. So I'm gonna leave this one outside of the container because it's still very, very moist. You can see it's leaving a lot of the lubricant on my hands. Um, and then we'll get back onto this beast. Okay, so this is uh, some of my gear that I typically use. Well, I, as I said, I'm not a professional, um, but the first thing that you want to do in all situations is put a pair of black gloves on because that turns you from an amateur to a semi-professional when anyone looks at you. So first step, number one, is always wear black gloves. Uh, after that, I mean, this is not a rupees uh, buffer, an orbital, dual orbital um, buffer, but the thing that I like about this for someone like me is that it goes both directions. Obviously it spins, uh, but it also moves backwards and forwards. So for someone like me who's not um, professional and you know I'm only gonna do this on cars and friends cars so this to me uh, you know two three hundred dollar orbital dual orbital buffer has been great I've just bought some extensions for this to do some very small pads um, to get around emblems and, and just on lips little things like here it's very hard to get any type of buffer in there or even here you want to be really cautious so uh, I've got an extension and some little uh, Oh, they're probably only about a 50 mil round. Um, and then of course, you're gonna need an array or a selection of uh, buffing uh, and um, uh, obviously different types of pads, depending upon what you wanna do. So um, if you're gonna cut, obviously you've got these guys here. Um, I personally have probably more enjoyed using wool when I first got started. Um, I just found that it was easier for me, again, just to learn how to drive this thing and not put scratches on, but actually remove scratches. Essential to me though is obviously some masking tape, some, some tape that's not gonna stick on there uh, forever. I'm gonna tape around the logos. Uh, you're gonna need some hand uh, buffing pads. Uh, extension to this and the, the very small ones, I wish I would've got that to start with. Definitely machine, and then tons of microfiber. Uh, towels. That was a big mistake that I made when I first started not having enough microfiber towels. So the first step that we're going to go and do is tape up uh, areas that we're concerned on, anywhere that we might overlap um, when we're buffing, uh, especially emblems and things like that is go around there so we don't end up scratching and uh, just so we can work a section at a time. Um, the tape will really help us to do that uh, so that we never feel like we're rushing uh, because it's not the idea with this process is that you take your time and you get the best results possible So let's go and tape up first and then I'll show you the gear that I'm using A lot of 
people watching this video might be thinking that, Tim, you are so good, you're so accurate with your taping. Now, nah, I'm only joking. A lot of people are probably seeing this and wondering why I'm doing so much taping. I see it like this, I'm protecting the car from me. I'm pretty fast and loose usually, but what I've found, especially if you're using a cutting compound and then several layers on top of that, is that it's very easy to get um, excess onto these black parts, black trim, even onto the, the lights, accidentally, um, because you don't do this every single day, and uh, you might just be wanting to cut into here with the small uh, machine. Protecting this now will save you from having to try and do it in a hurry later, or thinking, oh, I'll be okay, and you know, you rub the machine onto you know, your acrylic headlight or something like that, it only takes a couple of seconds, the machine um, vibrates and rubs, and then you've got wear marks on this that you've got to fix up. So my advice after doing this a few times is just spend extra time protecting the car from yourself, uh, and that will pay off later on. I'm also going to be putting a ceramic coating on. Um, this is uh, Evo Nova Series, and um, I don't want to get it onto the headlights. Um, I don't want to get it onto extra parts of the trim. Um, I just wanna make sure that, that I don't have to do that later on. So taking extra time to do all this is a pain, but it's so much worth it uh, to protect yourself. I may end up putting some film on this um, or, or some of the other areas. So my advice would be just take extra time. Tape is cheap and it's well worth your time to do it before you go and get the machine in. much of the hazing as possible. What I would normally do when I start a panel is just a little bit of spray. Again, I tend to otherwise put too much cutting compound onto the actual disc and it can go um, a bit thick after a while. So the panel that I'm working on, I'm just gonna kind of move this around. And uh, a lot of the time you wanna try and work smaller. I've kind of already started on this one and then just repeat, repeat, uh, three passes. straight away. The other thing is make sure that you never let your wheel sit in the sun. Um, always try and make sure that this stays nice and moist, otherwise you end up with hard bits. Not a good idea. So this is a good show, I guess, when you've got a central spot compared to the panels. You can see any slight marring or swelling. Now this is the panel that I've done a couple of passes on, and if I go to the back, you see there is almost like eggshell on the back. It's just it's just horrible. So, um, I'm going to definitely need to do a fair bit of work on that panel. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Come on, camera. So, yeah, much more clarity and um, decent looks compared to that one, but uh, still could be better. Okay, so what I've done here is I've divided the paint just to get a very clear before and after. 
um, in kind of a cutoff section. Probably seen this done before. This might be more for me than anyone else. Tons of comparisons. But again, on the roof, like it's never bad, but it's definitely not deep in the color. And I want to see how it's actually going. There's a lot of water stains more than anything because the car has been a coastal car. So let's uh, get into this and see how it turns out. Okay, I'm not sure if this is going to work. It, I'm trying to get it to focus. You can see the reflection. Now I understand uh, why, I suppose, so many more panel beaters and, um, well, definitely paint correction places use like single light sources rather than like large panels like that is so that they can see this. So, you know, like there's still some hazing. That's where it hasn't been done. This side is two passes. I'm trying to get it to focus on that particular spot, which it just does not want to. And then over here is, is a single kind of uh, set of three passes. So I've done in total six on this particular side. Can I show you the line just there? Yeah, that's kind of where it comes across. Um, so there's definitely still some scratches in there. Um, so I might have to use a higher cut um, rate. I'm applying very light pressure, so I might actually apply a little bit more pressure. Um, and um, see how that goes on the next one. But overall, yeah, definitely is looking a lot better. I'm just sorry I can't show you what it actually looks like, uh, especially inside and um, with the light reflecting the way that it is. Uh, a single set of passes compared to two. Um, could you see it straight off the bat? No, you can't. It's very, very hard to see the difference between this and that. When you put it under, you know, you know, you're looking directly at the light there. Let me see if I can zoom in. Get a focus point. Man, it does not want to. Okay, so that compared to that, when, you've, when you're actually viewing it like that, yeah, you can see, you know, it's better, much better. And I think by the time we do a, uh, a nice coat on top, that'll all but eliminate all those fine scratches. So, worth extra passes, absolutely. Uh, just can't really see it under the light, sorry. All right, so you might have just seen me swap uh, in that last, oops, in that last video, you might have seen me swap so I went from um, uh, one of these fine napped, I guess you'd describe it, cutting discs. This is a Meguiar's disc, an A9220, or 22Q, pardon me. Um, which this is what it should look like, and, and obviously it's starting to fill up. And I tried one of these, these foam uh, cutting pads. Um, and, and look, I, I mean, I was looking at the finish on them. Um, this one, I guess the downside is that it does fill up, uh, and you might have seen me, I just get a screwdriver and turn it on, and it comes back up like that. I've gone through half the car, I'm gonna let this guy go and get into the wash. Um, this is okay, I just find I'm more in control with this particular one, far less foam. Um, so this does get you into locations that this one doesn't. However, I'm gonna go back over these small areas later with a very uh, fine, um, a fine uh, buffing pad. So uh, that's my take on these, but it's probably more personal preference and I guess the pros, the pros use completely different foam pads depending upon what they want to achieve. For me right now, I found that this got the cut and removed most of the swirl scratches and everything that I needed. Time for a refresh. Ice coffee. <laughs> talking about before you get this build up and uh, it all kind of just flows together now you could replace the pad 
if you've got spare, I'm almost done. So this is what I do is I give it a bit of speed and then I run the, uh, the screwdriver backwards and forwards. Just to try and open it up. You can spend a bit more time, but you see it opens it up and uh, allows you to just finish off if you need to. Um, the other thing that I thought I would uh, show you, day number three, this is the clay bar that I've done in a couple of, of the other videos, and um, it's gone back uh, to its original format. Actually, it still feels a lot softer than its original format. I think I might leave it out for another day. Um, I'll try and get that into focus. Um, here. So compared to the other day, you can see it's a lot more consistent. Um, I will be reusing this because you can see there's there's not a ton of big chunky particles or anything like that. And the consistency's gone back. So learning curve for me with these clay bars is yes, this felt like it was dead and starting to fall apart, but now it's a-okay. So I would suggest to hold on to them, let them dry out. I just had it out outside of any packets just sitting uh, and each day I just do a little bit of this kneading. Um, I reckon it's probably good to go back into the box now because I won't be clay barring another car for a month or two. So, lesson there. All right, welcome back. Day number three. Of course, it's great to be able to walk out and to see my beautiful baby gleaming from yesterday's efforts, which is good. Um, I feel like there were some really good depth improvements. We have done the first layer, and of course, this is the Suzuka grey colour, so quite different from the white that's available. Um, and um, yeah, managed to get around the whole vehicle. And now, today, I'm going to be doing medium to fine um, kind of top coats before we put the eraser on and then do some ceramic coating. So let's get into it. So I'm going to be using again another one of these Meguiar's pads. Uh, this is more of a fine nap uh, for uh, obviously trying to get the shine up. Uh, DMFS, uh, sorry, F5 finishing. Um, I believe. I'm gonna see how it goes. I've normally done the wool um, or this type of synthetic wool uh, in the past. It's been quite good, quite good results from those. And I'm not quite sure whether that's just because I'm, again, uh, this is an amateur channel, so I'm gonna see how it goes with these and then see if that gets the results that I want, those final little scratches out. Otherwise, I'll swap back to this. Shiny that car is. He's doing well. Okay, so I have polished the car now with a high resin uh, polish to finish it off. It feels really good. Um, so the truth is, I would have done a three stage um, compound kind of building from a, a very coarse to medium to fine. But unfortunately, I left it in another car and by the time I found out, it was too late. I'd already taped up the car and prepped it. So I went with um, a couple of products that I could source locally from, from um, yeah, and I'll list them and, and the other stuff in the actual post. I'm pretty happy overall. Uh, I mean, um, I can still see fine scratches, um, but compared to where it started, I think it's great. Um, the carbon fiber really came up quite nice and deep and that's what I suppose I was looking for with the polish was really just to get some better depth um, in this in this grey um, and, and the carbon fiber. So the next stage for me is to put the eraser all over the car, try and remove any oils or uh, waxes, which of course it shouldn't have any of that, but I'm just going to follow the steps. And then the actual um, ceramic coating that I'm using is this one here. So um, the Evo Nova series. And uh, this is very similar to any other um, ceramic coating. They give you a microfiber cloth, 
uh, the process, I mean, is very similar. Um, I, I mean, this is using um, some graphene as well. Uh, I'll, I'll read this bill. Nova Evo is a revolutionary hybrid, hybrid ceramic coating that infuses SiO2 technology with graphene to create the ultimate single layer coating. Um, so, you know, it talks about the gloss and how that works better. So, essentially, you get this little guy here, which is a nice little emblem on there, a few drops onto that, and we're just going to smear it in the same way we were polishing. Uh, and then, um, anyway, all the instructions are online. I will see how this goes. I've never done ceramic coating before. I was looking for something that was easy to do in a single process, but also that would last a long time. So we'll see how it goes. Um, the car is pretty prepped, um, but I'm just gonna go over it to make sure that there's nothing that's gonna stop this from sticking. And then we're gonna leave it, um, make sure that it dries off, and we are ready to rock. I'm just gonna do some before and afters uh, with the actual ceramic coating, just to look around the car. Obviously the depth in these carbon fiber, oops, in the carbon fiber is really good. I just love the way these side blades have come up really deep uh, in, and rich in the color. So if I highlight on say the roof and I go, okay, just checking out, okay, how we go for swirls. You can still see there's some, some minor scratches. Um, the camera shows it up really clear um, when you actually are just looking at the car. It's very hard to see now. So I'm really, I'm quite pleased with how it's all come up. Um, this panel here is probably still the worst on the car. Um, I don't know what happened, whether, yeah, I mean, when you lift up the back, this whole panel comes up. So whether this was resprayed at, at a time, I'm not quite sure. But you can see it just doesn't have the same gloss as uh, the panel next to it uh, when comparing. Um, but again, overall, it's come up heaps better than what it was. So I am going to now get stuck into this ceramic coating so we can finish off. Okay, so as I hope you've seen so far, everywhere I've, or every time I've started on the car, I've always started on this back quarter panel. Two reasons. Number one, as an amateur, and I think uh, if you're watching this channel, you're probably an amateur too, uh, much like myself, you've got an idea of what you want to do, but you're sometimes trying new things. So this is very much the panel that I was trying to start on to make sure that everything went okay and nothing went wrong and I would always loop back around to the same spot. I'm gonna do the exact same process uh, with the ceramic coating. Um, this says to work on a 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter area and almost wipe it off immediately with one cloth and then use a second to make sure that it's completely gone. So within reason, I mean, these cloths aren't massive. Um, they, <laughs> they're quite small, what you kind of use for your glasses. Um, I've got those and I've got a backup uh, one here, microfiber cloth. Uh, just apply drips along here and um, and then work in a horizontal and vertical way. So I'm going to do it on a small test area and I'm just going to put a few drops on here, being the first one a little bit more than I would normally. I've got a good light coming in and I'm just going to go up to about this cross point and back down because I've got the car taped up. I don't have to be too particular about it. So for my one here, I'm just going to work this square and it's running at about 20, 23 degrees here and about probably 60 to 70 percent humidity. So I'm just going to do it to that corner there. Just going to check it. Okay, so I can see the streaks and the streaks are kind of drying out as we speak. So it says to wipe it off almost immediately. So I'm just gonna almost buff it. Like so. Which isn't leaving any residue on there. 
looks nice and glossy. Yeah, okay, so I can feel a slight difference. Um, and I'll just use a second cloth, I'll use this one as my secondary cloth. Just to make sure it comes off. Or as buffed as intended. Okay, so I can definitely feel a more glossy finish. Uh, with my finger um, but the instructions were very clear and not to leave it on for any more than um, two minutes in total working small areas um, up and back make sure it's smeared around and then uh, I'm gonna leave it probably on the next one a little bit longer just to try and dry off it was really it was very very clear about not leaving it too long um, so let's let's do a few more panels and see how we go Okay, this might be, this might look really boring, but I'm going to try and do this panel here just so you might be able to see it. So, let's see here, a couple of drops along this bead, come up the ridge, run along the ridge. It's kind of like squeegeeing it, really, once you do it that way, do it the opposite. And I double checked the instructions, it's definitely wipe it off almost instantly. So it must create a bonding process as you're doing this. So that's more to try and make sure that it's getting the right spread. And then we grab our polishing cloth. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like someone's just done a yeah, a bad job on a window or just high, high end polish is just enough applied. That's all it looks like. And yeah, it looks pretty good when you wipe it off. I mean, the car was looking pretty good anyway. So I'm doing my first one and then my second buffing just to try and make sure that we get everything off now can I see any difference between this panel the lower panel and the upper in gloss level to the eye uh, nah not really but uh, in actual feel yeah, absolutely. It feels, it feels better here to the touch. Um, remember, I've used the eraser on this before I did. So this, this you can feel the silica or silicon kind of finish on this section. So um, let's go for it now. Okay, I have finished. I'll do the reveal uh, shortly. Got to go around and remove all the tape, obviously. Um, I have probably used a third of this bottle and I know, because of the lighting setup, that I, I used it as it's meant to. At the end, I had probably more than enough. I mean, there's not a huge, huge amount of surface area on the R8 compared to other cars. This is a 30 mil bottle. Um, I guess time will tell. I mean, I, I've done even down to these fins. Um, and what I did really like about this particular brand, this Evo Nova series, is this little foam. It's perfect just to get like in these actual um, parts. Um, I'm super glad that I took the time originally to tape everything up. 
It just allowed me to not have to be really, really fussy in particular when I was applying the ceramic coating. Um, so I'll take all the tape off and then we'll have a look at uh, yeah, the finish on it. Okay, so you've seen the results for yourself. Um, it's always difficult because in person it's very different from what it is uh, on camera. I, I'm, I'm pretty happy, you know, like the, the feel of it especially is probably similar to some of those, um, oh, what do I call cheap waxes that you spray on uh, after you've washed your car to just give a good hydrophobic protection. Um, the biggest part of, of this process was prep for me. I would suggest, strongly suggest taping off. That was my take. Um, and I, I guess the real test is going to be time and um, how well it protects against all of the elements over the next year or so. Um, if I get to do it again, I'm gonna do probably three stages of paint correction, um, but Overall, I'm really happy with the way that it looks now in comparison. I can't wait to get it out in the sun. It says eight hours of drying time, so tomorrow morning I'm good to take this even if it's gonna rain. Um, yeah, so I'll put some more images up and uh, yeah, tell me what you think.